Dr. Hemmel, I want to thank you for coming to the office here. I know it was a long <clears throat> walk across the hall, <laughs> but I learned prolotherapy from you, and so did most of the other doctors who do the Hackett technique of prolotherapy. Can you just explain a little bit of how you got interested in prolotherapy? Well, way back in 1955, when the AMA used to have its big meetings where 30, 35,000 people came to the meetings, they would have, along with the meeting, what they called the scientific exhibits. And they would have uh, literally hundreds of exhibits of the doctors who wanted to present work that they had been doing. So I was roaming through these exhibits, uh, and uh, there'd be a couple of doctors here and a couple of doctors there looking at exhibits. I came down the hall, and here's an exhibit where there were 10, 12 doctors all crowded around listening to this gentleman talk. And uh, it turned out to be Dr. Hackett. And Dr. Hackett was talking about a treatment for chronic low back pain. Well, nobody uh, knew what to do for chronic low back pain anyway. And so I thought, well, uh, I've had my troubles with listening to patients complain about low back pain. So I thought, well, I'll hear what this fellow had to say. Well, he had just published a book and he was talking about uh, a method of treating low back pain that had some very definitive uh, results and some very permanent results, which was different than most anybody else had been making claims to. So I listened to him for 15, 20 minutes or so, and I bought his book and went back and listened to him a few more times, and I thought, this is the first time that I've ever heard anybody talk anything uh, that made sense in the treatment of low back pain. So I got all the information I could, and I went home and uh, came down the hall of West Suburban Hospital, and the chief technician of the hospital in the laboratory stopped me in the hall and said, Doctor, she says, my sister has a very severe chronic low back pain. She's had it for 11 years. She hasn't been able to go to a grocery store. She hasn't been able to uh, get on the bus because she can't lift her leg. And she says, I've had it everybody on the staff here that was supposed to know anything about back pain, and nobody can help her. Do you have any suggestions? Well, I said, I've just come back from Atlantic City, and I've just heard about a new treatment that I've never used. I read about it, I've got a book, but I said, it sounds to me like a good treatment. She says, well, she says, if you're willing to try it on my sister, my sister will come. I said, okay, that's fine. I would be glad to do that. <clears throat> so she brought her sister in. Uh, I had my office here in the west side. The sister lived way up in the north side, up by Loyola University. And, uh, but she came in, and I very gingerly started to treat her. And uh, not knowing exactly what to do, I had her Gave her a few shots, and I had her come back in a week and gave her a few more. And uh, after a couple of weeks, she said, you know, she said, I'm starting to feel better. Well, that encouraged her, and it encouraged me. So we kept on working away at it and doing the best we could. And I'd look at the book, and I'd read the things. And then, uh, one day she came in and she was all smiles. And she said, you know, I came down here all the way from the north side, all by myself on the bus. She's the first time I've been on a bus in 11 years. Well, that was my first case. And of course that encouraged me tremendously. 
And where I used to try to hide from back pain patients, I now began to look for them. And from that point on, I have had excellent results in the care of chronic low back pain. And uh, I went to the meeting and I headed right for the scientific exhibits, hoping this Dr. Hackett would be there again. And sure enough, it, he was. So I waited for an opportunity to talk to him. And I told him I had been using this treatment and I had been getting good results. And I just want to let him know how satisfied I was. And he was kind of an abrupt sort of an individual. And he looked me right straight in the face. He tell me, he says, are you really interested in this treatment? I said, yes. Well, he said, if you'll come to Canton, Ohio and spend some time with me, he says, I've been doing this for 17 years. And he says, I'll teach you everything that I've learned in the past 17 years if you'll come down there. So I said, well, that's a tremendous offer. And so I did that and I went down to Canton and uh, we became friends. And then later on, I began to travel with him and help him put on uh, demonstrations at other medical meetings. And uh, then some other doctors got interested and uh, soon we had a group of 10 or 12 doctors and we would decided we would form an organization and that's when we fir first formed the uh, Prolotherapy Association. And uh, so that was back in 55 and 56 and I've been using it ever since. How did you come up with the dextrose lidocaine solution? Well, in the beginning, uh, Dr. Hackett had made a very thorough study of every available sclerosing solution there was, and he came up with the idea that Silnosol was the best thing available. So we were all using Silnosol until Cyril and company for reasons of their own, very suddenly and abruptly took it off the market. Well, in the meantime, uh, there had been some other work done and we started to use the solution of zinc sulfate, which was all right, but it was very painful. And about that time, we had some visitors from London over there and in our medical meeting, we were talking about various ways of trying to control the pain of the zinc sulfate. And uh, the English people said, well, uh, we don't have that trouble because uh, we haven't had either zinc sulfate or silnosol. But for many years, we've been using uh, the uh, hypertonic solutions of dextrose. It's been used here for the past 50 years for the treatment of varicose veins, and so we just simply started using it uh, uh, for the treatment of the backs, and so that's what we've been using. So we immediately started using the uh, dextrose solutions and for the intraarticular solutions, we would use the 25% and for the rest of it, we would cut it in half and uh, approximately 12.5%. Uh, and and uh, so that's been very satisfactory over the years when it hasn't been uh, all that we need for certain patients, we've added the zinc sulfate and sometimes we've added the sodium aureoid and uh, other doctors in other parts of the country have used other types of solutions. But the basic principle has been the same. That is uh, to use a solution that causes enough irritation to produce a growth of 
new fibrous tissue uh, in the weak areas uh, of the, what we call the fibrolosseous junction. Is this new tissue that grows, is this permanent or is, is prolotherapy just kind of a temporary help? No, it's permanent. And not only is it permanent, but actually in most cases where it's been tested, the new tissue has been actually better and stronger than the original tissue. When you say tested, they've tested it on animals well, or humans? Or? Uh, well, no, they've done experimental work on rabbits. They would uh, take a rabbit tendon and inject it and uh, well, they, they tested uh, to see how much strength it had, and then they would uh, uh, inject it and test it again, and the injected lig ligaments that they produced were always stronger than the, than the original ones. How many patients would you say you've treated in the almost 40 years that you've been using the treatment? Well, we started out numbering the patients and making a little card on each one. And uh, uh, I think that now we're in the early 8,000 numbers of all the cases that we've done. What has your experience been in treating over 8,000 patients? Well, we figure that uh, percentage-wise that we've been able to uh, help, if not completely cure, at least give them a great measure of relief in over 80% of the patients we've treated. You've treated over 8,000 patients. Is prolotherapy a safe procedure or is, it, is there some risk to it? There is just about zero risk. In the very, very early days when Silnosol was being used, uh, some people had uh, unfortunately gotten some of the Silnosol into the uh, subarachnoid space and there were two or three cases that were reported in the literature. And of course, because there were two or three cases reported, uh, that gave it a black eye. And even though uh, there has never been a case reported except with the Silnosol. So... When you say a case report, you mean somebody actually uh, died? Yeah, uh, well, not died or had any bad results. The bad results were always with the Silnosol, and with the onset of the use of uh, substances such as dextrose, there's never been any, any problem. So I'd say it's a very, very safe procedure. So in your experience using the hypertonic dextrose solution, what has been your experience in regard to complications? No complications from the use of the dextrose. So you're saying that you haven't had any episodes of infection, nerve injury? There's never been a nerve injury. Well, all right. Uh, at one time, a doctor that was working with me, injecting an elbow, got, on, got in there and got the radial nerve. And uh, the patient then developed uh, uh, the usual radial nerve paralysis things, but being in a peripheral nerve, uh, it took time, but uh, had 100% recovery. Never been any permanent problems with it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in all the cases I've done, I never so much as I've ever seen a pimple develop. Uh, there's been no uh, no in infections, and I don't know of anybody who's reported infection, and I have never had any. There are people that 
say, take an aspirin a day or they take Motrin for their pain, would you say prolotherapy treatment is on the order of safety of those things or is actually even safer than taking those medicines? Well, if you talk about people taking aspirin in uh, doses of 12, 15, 18 tablets a day, and if you talk about any of the NSAIDs, uh, yes, the prolotherapy is far safer than either of those methods. All of the other ones ending up with gastrointestinal bleeding and many complications that you never see with prolotherapy. If, the, if someone's contemplating having surgery, would you recommend that they be evaluated by somebody who does prolotherapy? Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> surgery should be way down the line on the treatment of most chronic pain. Right now, <clears throat> uh, the average surgeon who does back surgery uh, thinks he's lucky if he helps half the patients he operates on. And when he says help them, he means he relieves the pain in the leg, but they still have their back ache. But he gives them a little bit of help. But <clears throat> complete 100% of pain is a rare thing after surgery. And you had said earlier that a substantial portion of your patients, and you've treated over 8,000, do have permanent relief of their pain. Yes. <clears throat> I've been at it now for nearly 40 years. It's interesting to have patients come in who will say, you treated me 10 years ago, you treated me 15 years ago, you treated me 20 years ago. <clears throat> what about the person who says, you know, I, when, I, when I'm in physical therapy, I feel better, but, you know, when I stop, it, it, it seems like the pain gets going real severe yes. again. Physical therapy, manipulation, osteopathy, chiropractic, uh, good treatment by a physiatrist, uh, all can give good relief of pain, <clears throat> but in most instances it doesn't last, particularly if it's a chronic pain. If it's an acute pain, if it's something that the patient was okay last week and they got a pain this week, then some of these things will fix them up and they stay fixed up. But the chronic pains, uh, uh, the relief is almost always just transient. And the chiropractors, you know, they have them coming back every week, every week, every week. Physical therapy, every week, twice a week, three times a week and uh, they end up running up bigger bills than we do. What about the person who does get relief from chiropractic care? Shouldn't they keep doing that? Well, if they have to go back every week, and I've had them, people come in who've gone to a chiropractor every week for a year, uh, no, I, I don't think that's good treatment. What, are, are you saying that the prolotherapy could give them permanent relief where they don't have to get any treatment whatsoever, whereas these other treatments cause the person to continue it? In, right. In, in essence, indefinitely. Right. Our goal is to get a complete cure and have the patient stay well. When you say complete cure, do you mean that their pain's totally gone? but they still have limits in the activity they can do or that they can do all the activities that they did before? Uh, that varies with what the activities were that they did before. I've had athletes <clears throat> who get terribly banged up and I fix them up and they go back in and they're able to carry on their full activity. Now if you take another patient who does a certain time of type of work on his job and he did that work and it wrecked his back and you fix him up and he goes back and does exactly the same kind of work, he's got a good chance of having a recurrence. 
and if possible, it would be good if he could change his, his activity. But most people, when we get them fixed up, they go about their usual things and with no restrictions. And have you given any thoughts about your medical practice, which is next door here, what you would like to see in the future? I'd like to see another five years anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm getting kind of old. Well, how old are you now? I'm 85 now. So. Um, and you're still in active practice? Yes. That's fantastic. So, how much longer I keep going, I don't know. I enjoy what I'm doing. I feel like I'm helping people. I feel like I'm helping other doctors. And uh, as long as I feel like I'm doing some good, I'm gonna to try to keep going.